everyone is doing well today. Thank you for jumping on, on with me. I really appreciate you guys joining in. Um, but we'll be doing a webinar here on kind of the Q3 second half marketing plan just to make sure you have every everything, all your ducks in a row and uh, making sure we set you up to accomplish your goals that you had for this year and hopefully blow past them. So yeah, we'll be going over kind of some of the key metrics here and yeah, let's, let's go ahead and jump right in. And so again, for those of you who don't know um, who I am, my name is Kelsey, um, co-founder and CEO of Lyft Auto Repair Marketing. And so we work with strictly just auto repair shops across the country. And so our company goal is to help over a thousand shops double the revenue. So now, no, it's a very big goal, but we definitely, we want to make sure we accomplish that goal and just really help the industry in every possible way that we can. And so, and we believe in helping you lift your business to its potential. And so no, no pun intended. And so, and just, just to give you a quick, quick recap, there's some YouTube testimonial links on, on our YouTube channel. So feel free to check those out. I'm not going to play them here. And this is just to, sh just to show you that these are just some of the awesome shops that we have been able to help um, so far in, in their journeys. But what we're going to, what we're going to talk about a lot today is going to be the digital dominance method and kind of how having all of these elements aligned with your online marketing can really help push your shop to the next level. And it's really important to have all of these key pieces focused on, because if not, I mean, that, that could be one loose end that does that make sure that the wheel doesn't move properly. And so you want to make sure that you have all, all of these pieces aligned. But first and foremost, I mean, the most important thing before we go about making a plan is making sure that you understand your why. And so before you can set up your shop for success, um, remind yourself of why you want um, to be doing this in the first place. And so I'm, I'm a really big proponent on making goals and making sure um, we always have direction in, in terms of what we're doing. I'm reading a book called um, Starting With Why right now by Simon Sinek. He's one of my favorite authors and um, really enjoying his book again that this this will go around but he's really big on um really understanding your why and making sure that everyone understands that not just the the, the people um, within the company but also making sure that your customers are understanding your why as well and so without a clear why uh, your goals will fail 100 100 um if you don't have a direct purpose behind why you're making the goals you're going to end up failing um so make sure that you again have a clear why and businesses won't live to their full potential and burnout comes easily. If again, if you're in it to say, uh, I just, I felt like it was a good thing to do. And people, I heard people can make lots of money from it. Then I, again, you might get to that point of success, but then there's not going to be any real joy or happiness behind what, what you're doing. And so you want to make sure that you're, you're understanding those elements. And so having a clear, a clear why will set you up for success. And so again, how do you, how do you achieve your why? Um, Again, for me, the big uh, big proponent is goals. Just like I, I make goals every single day in terms of things I want to accomplish, but then we also make monthly goals. So my wife and I, we do a big retreat in terms of the very beginning of the year and making our yearly goals, not just for our business, but for our family um, and for anything that we want to really accomplish. We look out five years, our big dreams, kind of look at, look at it all. Um, and there was a really good podcast I listened to. Um, it's it's the, the Bigger Pocket pockets podcast i know that's on real estate um but they had a they had a guest speaker that um the one thing i, I believe was the book and then there was a husband and wife that helped with that book and they they talked about how they they do a big kind of retreat thing um for goals for each other and so i i thought that was amazing when i heard it and so my wife and i tried it out and it's been an amazing thing for us as well and so again i highly highly recommend it i believe that it can really um, help those. I, I wasn't a big proponent of goals growing up and I, I wish I was, I wish I did. I, I focus on that a lot more because I want to help me stay focused and, and knowing what uh, I want to achieve and why I want to achieve it. Um, but with that, then you, when you have goals and you can have action plans behind how to accomplish those goals, you can break those down. And then at the end of the day, you, you don't want to be afraid of failure. Um, as, as a business owner, as I'm sure a lot of you do know, there's a lot of failure that comes with running a business and, and doing so many different things. And so it, with those highs and lows, you want to make sure that, again, you, you need to fail in order to succeed. And so um, to, kind of taking those in stride. Um, and so and a big way to help accomplish your goals, at least in my opinion, are is creating accountability. And so creating a goal 
alone, just creating a goal creates a six to 8% chance of success or of, of that goal succeeding. So just by creating one. So you don't have one, obviously there's no chance of success. You don't, you don't really know what your goals are. Maybe it's just made up in your head. Um, and then a step further than that, if you go about writing the goal down, like it creates a 25 to 30% chance increase of, of that the goal succeeding even more. And so now, granted that that's not the highest percentage, but much higher than just creating it. Now, now you write, you wrote it down on a piece of paper, you can visually see it. And the third thing, verbally sharing your goals with others creates a 55 to 60% chance of succeeding. And so now we're getting up there and I'm getting over 50% just by now sharing your goals with others. And so my wife and I, we share our goals with each other, but then also um, when other people ask, I'm more than willing to share kind of what our goals, what our big dreams are and making sure that because kind of voicing that into, into reality. And then the step further than that, kind of the biggest step is having an accountability partner um, creates a more than 85% chance of succeeding. So now that you, if you have a spouse or a significant other, great use, um, definitely have them as an accountability partner. But also if I know a lot of you are in different, different uh, kind of business coaching, um, business coaching, uh, I can't even think of the word behind it, but you have a business coach and so you have teams behind that. And so I'm sure you've made a bunch of friends through those things. Um, make sure that again, you partner with someone and, and just share your goals with each other for your, for your different shops, what you want to accomplish, and maybe even have once a month, once a quarter, just meet with them to feed off each other and how things are going. Cause even if things are not going well, maybe they have like good ideas of how you can accomplish those goals. So it's always nice having an accountability partner there. And then again, now once, once we make, once we make those goals, we need an action plan to accomplish them. And so in terms of the action plan of, of marketing, and we, we go about it using the digital dominance method. And so the digital dominance method, again, is this sort of wheel of success, um, so to say, in terms of online marketing and making sure all these pieces and elements are aligned. And so today I'm going to be going over um, like four of these and just kind of the importance of them, kind of the high level pieces of, of looking at these different elements, just to make sure that, again, we're at the halfway, we're, a little, we're more than the halfway point of the year now at this point. So you want to make sure that you're at least checking on these things that they're working, that you're seeing ROI, seeing return. You're not just letting it ride. And yes, it's the summer. So things are a little bit busy, but you want to make sure that things are um, well optimized so that as you go into the, the winter and, and, the, and the months that tend to be a little bit slower, that those things are aligned, that you can make sure that that floor keeps rising higher and higher for your shop. And so four key marketing points. Uh, that we're going to go over first one's going to be seo so or search engine optimization if you don't know what seo means um two is going to be google maps how to kind of the local seo aspect and ranking well in the maps number three sms campaigns or your texting just leveraging texting how to make that um be another form that you're able to then bring people back and make sure they're either they're loyal to your your shop and then fourth, we're going to talk about um, PPC or pay-per-click campaigns, primarily through Google ads, how to kind of optimize, leverage that, and make sure that you are kind of getting good ROI out of, out of that ad spend. So SEO marketing plan. So number one, um, we're going to talk about the three must do. So first, you want to create a search engine optimized website. So again, a website is, is important to have, and that's the one way that you're going to be found online. But again... If no one finds your website, it doesn't really matter that you created one. It, it kind of this is you're in the back of the phone book, or and someone has to find you through all the pages. It, the likelihood of them finding is very small. So you want to make sure that's very easy and accessible to find. And that's through getting an optimized website. Number two, SEO website is built to convert visitors into customers. So once they get there, you want to make sure it's built to convert, where it's very easy for them to either make an appointment, to give you a phone call, um, just get the information that they're looking for right away that then gets them to come to the shop at the end of the day. Because we don't, we don't want them to get lost on the website. We don't want them um, frustrated that your website's taking forever to load and they can't even figure out the phone number to call. They can't click on the phone number on their phone, things like that. You want to make sure it's optimized. And number three, build authority across the web. So building authority across the web then helps ensure that um, you rank well consistently um, in, in, your, in your local area and your competitors are just kind of fighting for that second and third spot rather than that one spot that you're, that you're dominating. And so, so optimizing your website, um, that, that's, again, there's some different components. Some people have different um, ideas on what that is. I'm going to go about what 
what we've seen work for, for some of our shops. And so first and foremost, what we like to focus on is content. So content needs to be informational, needs to be relevant, it needs to be rich. And so within, within Google's algorithm, again, it, it can't quite determine a design. It sees the page speed, it sees, it sees those elements. So the design affects the speed and that affects how long someone stays on the website. But at the end of the day, Google can just read the words that's on there. That's gonna help determine what your business is, what you do, how you should rank. And so the more rich and, and powerful, relevant content that you have, the better and more trustworthy um, you'll be in Google's eyes. And so you wanna make sure that you're constantly putting new content. And so I know people have asked, okay, well, why, like, why is a blog necessary? And again, a, a blog is just a, another method for you to add more content towards your website. It's not necessarily, we're not looking for your customers to sit and read every single blog post that you have. It's just the idea that it gives us an opportunity to make your website more powerful in Google's eyes and make you better for different keywords. And then index in Google. You want to make sure that, again, you're able to be found on, on Google. You need to make sure that it's tied to um, the Google search engine. And so there's a, there's a way that, as you, as you said, if your website, you want to make sure that you check it. Um, Google Search Console, free tool of Google's make sure that it's tied in there and that Google is, is indexed, indexing your website. Technical SEO is probably done. And so again, this is a lot, a lot more backend. I know a lot of you probably rely on, you, on your marketing, your website person to take care of this, um, but you wanna make sure that th these elements are done. The meta titles, H1, H2 tags, et cetera. There's a lot of, a lot of backend stuff that goes into it, but you wanna make sure that that is, um, that is looked at and being taken care of. And so optimizing your website for conversion um, as, as the next piece, you want to make, make sure that your website is speaking to your target avatar, or your, tar your target customer. And so first off, you want to make sure you, you understand who your target customer is. You know, what if maybe you have predominantly women that come into your shop, you want to make sure then that your website kind of reflects that, that you're attracting those people because those are the majority that's visiting your website or they're just certain Again, certain age demographics or whatever it may be that that are that are on the website, you want to make sure that it's very easy for them to see what they want to see. What are their fears, frustrations? Why should they choose your shop over someone else? You want to make that very clear and apparent. Make your website just very friendly um, and be real. Um, there's a lot of a lot of people that just don't have time to take the pictures, um, but again taking a little bit of time to even non-professional photos just with your phone, taking, taking pictures of the shop works better than having just a bunch of stock photos in there. Cause again, stock photos, there's a bunch of other websites that can use our shops that can use the same thing. Cause again, they're free stock photos. And so you, I don't know if, about some of you, but I, I've seen a bunch of websites that have the same sort of photos layered throughout their website. And that's primarily just due to the fact that they the website developer more, more than likely just didn't have organic photos to work off of. And so make sure you take that time Grant, yes, a professional photographer would, would be the best outcome, but if you don't have the means or you just, you don't want to deal with that aspect of it, then again, just walk around with your phone five minutes, uh, just taking a few shots and then making sure that those get uploaded because you can leverage that within your maps. You can leverage that just a lot of different ways. Um, use video and multimedia elements to engage on the website as well. And so again, you, you these don't need to be really long and extensive. It could be like a welcome video, like kind of a welcoming them into the website or just giving them customer an idea of what things are, will be like at the shop. Um, make sure what I recommend is always make sure that that YouTube, that, that, that video is embedded within YouTube as Google owns YouTube and Google loves when you use their product more than when you use someone else's. And so uh, make sure that it's an embedded YouTube video. It will tend to perform a little bit better on your website. Uh, leverage social proof. And so you want to showcase your online reviews probably on, on your homepage as well, because people love reading reviews. And that's just the natural um, way things roll. And if they see a lot of people have good reviews, they don't, they kind of have FOMO a little bit of fear of missing out. And so you want to make sure that you have that social proof, that backing. If you can even um, make videos of, of, of cus actual customers leaving a testimonial, putting those on, that can be a really powerful tool as well. And so another, another avenue that, that you can do to leverage social proof even, even better. Get the basics in order. Um, again, you wanna overcomplicate over -complicate things on the website. Just make sure that it's clean, easy to maneuver, easy to read, and um, has that phone call on appointment. It's very easy on, on the website there. Phone number, right-hand corner. Ensure that web form customers can fill out. And uh, some people, they just, they only prefer calls. But again, in this day and age, some people are just not comfortable talking on the phone. So you wanna make sure that you have the ability for them to 
text you and then they really where they can just fill out a form and, and put their information maybe you have preferred date and preferred time of appointment and then through that you can then give them a call and confirm what day and time they come in but at least it gave you that opportunity to win that customer rather than them seeing that oh they don't even have a form i'm just going to find someone else that does so at least give them give them a chance to do that at credibility with authority symbols and so just again if you're ASC certified technicians, if you're a part of different things, just if you want an award locally, make sure you just put those, put those on the website. Ensure you have clear call to actions on each page um, that speak to your customer and use special offers or coupons that match a service that they're in need of. So if you, again, if you're, if you are offering specials, make sure that those are clearly labeled on the website. So then that way people know that uh, how, how to see that, that you, that you're offering those certain things, especially um, as, as it relates to the different um, seasons that we're in. And start giving clients the option to book online. Again, very um, beneficial item that it allows you to properly align your calendar at, um, in, in the future and, and seeing when it might be slower, when it might be busier, just giving you a proper clear idea. And so just make sure that you at least give them that opportunity to put um, their preferred date and times there. And then, like I mentioned before, engaging and, and texting. And then thanks for those that I think some new ones, new people have jumped on in. Um, we're just getting right into the thick of things. Um, we're just on that first, that first um, portion of just talking about the importance of aligning your SEO with your marketing plan. But if, you, if anyone has any questions at any time, please feel free to message and drop, drop questions in there. I'll stop. I'll answer those. Um, since yeah, you were kind enough to join us live here, I'm happy to answer any questions that, that you may have along the way. Um, and so... SEO, one aspect now, we just, we talked a lot about on-site SEO. And then, so then there's another, another um, side of things, what we, what we like to call off-site SEO. And so that's what the link building citations. So link building or backlinks as, as they're called are like blog posts or articles that have that hyperlink on a, on a word that when you click on it, it leads to another website. And within Google, they, they love this because now it's like another website sort of referring you and again, building more trust with with your company. And so you want to definitely make sure that there's links out there kind of re referencing your shop, your website back. Citations are just online directories, just there's thousands of them. And just make sure that you have your accurate name, address, phone number, how you listed it in your Google um, business profile and making sure that matches exactly the same. You don't want it different because you don't get credit. Um, and then content creation, if you have a YouTube channel, have a blog on, on your website, social media presence, just regularly posting on um, your Facebook, whatever avenue that you have. Um, and then gaining high quality reviews. You want to make sure that you're, you're consistently getting those reviews. Because again, like I mentioned, people love reading them. So make sure you get as many as you can. All right. So that covers the SEO side of things. So now I'm going to go a little bit now focused siloing on like kind of local SEO portion of Google Maps. Because Google Maps is where, I mean, a good, good portion, more than half of the people will come and find you just through the map alone. So you want to make sure that you have this in line. But any questions so far uh, in terms of the SEO aspect that I just talked about? And if not, no problem. We can, we can, we can keep on going. All right. So Google, so Google Maps, the, the some of the four must do's in terms of your Google Maps. Um, your GBP profile is geo optimized. So I, I guess first and foremost, make sure you create your Google Business profile. Um, it's free to do. Go to business.google.com, and then there, if hopefully you already have created it, and it's tied to whatever Gmail that that you have there. But if not, go through the steps get the confirmation code and, and get your business registered on Google business. Yeah. Cause again, you're missing out on a large, large portion of clientele. If you're, if you're not on there, but being geo optimized, you want to make sure that you're locally um, drop, dropping certain elements on there that, that people are aware of, where you, whether you're labeling certain neighborhoods around you, things like that. You want to make sure that you are optimized um, locally. Number two, building citations or, or NAP is the name, address, phone number. That's, that's all NAP stands for, making sure that matches across the board, getting consistent five-star reviews, and then maintaining their reputation. And so within your reviews, you want to make sure that you're also responding to the reviews. Um, a lot of people just ignore them or they just say thank you. Just you, you can say thank you, but then also say like what vehicle they brought in, what they came in for. It's a little bit extra and it will, it will help you in terms of ranking better within the maps because now you're giving Google a little bit more data there. So your GBP, our Google business profile is completely optimized, correct name, address, phone number, a link to book appointments through your business profile, 
Um, images are geotagged and are, are properly named. Images don't save it as image one, image two, image three. Save it as a keyword. Save it at, if, if it doesn't look like an actual service that, that someone's performing, say it's just the outside of your shop. And then you just say auto repair shop location name. Like just say, say something along those lines where again, you're throwing in the keyword, saving it like that in your business profile. Quick business hours are updated. You want to make sure that those are consistent both on the website and on, on your Google business. So you change them, make sure that those are updated. Um, correct amount of service listed. You do not want too many. Um, I've seen a lot of profiles where there are just like hundreds of, of things listed on there. Just different forms. They're just almost in a sense, just trying to stuff keywords and Google's catching onto that now. And it kind of almost flagging a profile as spam. And so you want to make sure that you limit the amount of service that you have and really um, there should be no more than like 15 to 20 um, listed there. If you have any more than that, that's probably too excessive. You can probably combine a few of those and um, make sure that um, you kind of keep it simple. Really a set of GBP posts. So my rule of thumb is just post once per week in, within your Google business profile. Um, those posts are hard to find and, and very tricky to find. But Google, again, loves when you use their product. And so just use their product post in your GBP. Um, it doesn't matter how many views it's showing that, that you're having, it'll just help you rank better in, locally in the maps. And so build your citation background, building citations, like I mentioned, are those directories. Um, there's different ways that you, that you can check to make sure that those are matching correct. There's different tools that, that you can use out there. Um, I believe they all, I don't, I don't, I don't, I haven't heard of a free one that, that allows you to check, but if you just type in like citation checker in Google, you'll, you'll find a, different, a, a whole list of options in terms of what to use there. But you wanna make sure they match again. So yeah, across your website, across social media. Um, if you say so you move locations or your phone number changed, anything al along those lines, you wanna make sure that you update all the citations across the board. And if you're not the one managing all that, make sure your marketing person knows and, and make sure that those are updated because again, that will hurt your rankings if you do not go ahead and update everything across the board. Um, all right, so we have a question. Is it possible for appointments made from Google or your tech service to go right to Techmetric's appointment board? Um, and so within te Techmetric, typically they don't allow new data from a separate platform to push into. I, I don't know if this is gonna change for them in, in the near future or not. I know as of right now that, that at least in my experience, the data can't be pushed back into Techmetric. It just, they allow data to be pulled out. And so, um, for example, within our CRM, we, we pull out the appointments within the Techmetric calendar to then set up appointment reminders, but um, vice versa. If someone, say, booked an appointment on your website, you would have to put that, you would have to put that in. I don't know if they're coming out with a code here soon, or maybe they have a code that I just, I'm just not aware of, but as of right, as of right now, um, yeah, if someone were to make an appointment through Google that wouldn't automatically populate in um, te Techmetric today, but maybe here in the near future, I know they've been, they've been going really quickly. Oh, another person said mechanic advisor can. So yeah, um, I know mechanic advisor I've seen has an actual form that you can put onto a website that then directly correlates into that calendar. So yeah, as long as, as long as there's a kind of a plugin attachment to a website, you can make that work, but directly from Google. So I know Google has an option within the map that, you can almost have like appointment requests. And so that wouldn't directly um, tie to um, any, any of these automatically, not yet at least. So great question. And then gaining consistent five-star reviews, best way is gonna be through texting. Um, people read their text all the time. And so you wanna make sure that you're leveraging that. I'll go into that here a little bit. As, as it's our number three topic, but just make sure that you're, you're using texting of some shape or form. That's just, the way to communicate. That's, that's what everyone prefers nowadays. And provide a quality service that will attract good reviews in the first place. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have the texting, but if you're not performing a quality service, you're not going to get the five-star reviews that you need to be able to rank better. So make sure first and foremost that you have a quality service, you're treating your customers right, and, and those will come. And then respond regularly, like I mentioned, to reviews, good and bad. You don't want to just respond to the good ones saying thank you and the bad ones you ignore. That won't be a good look either. And so the bad ones, Again, they're, they're pain, but it's important to at least respond, be kind. Um, and if something needs to be done to make it right, you just make it right. And that's, uh, that's all there is to it. 
Um, and then managing reputation, that's responding regularly, like I mentioned, to respond to questions. Or there, at times, people will message questions and make sure you have um, quick response rates, rates to those when, when those come in. And then interact with your audience on social media as people, if people comment, things like that. Make sure that you are, you are commenting back. You don't just let, let it um, go unsaid. Um, but one way to really check if you're performing well is something that we, we leverage is called local Viking. And so you're able to kind of see a radius around your shop and how you're performing in the maps. And so ideally, your map would, or not ideally, your, your shop would appear in the center of the map. And then it kind of will give you, if someone were to search auto repair from here, this is where I'm appearing in the map. So someone search auto repair from here, this is where number I'm appearing in the map. So this is saying that this person is not even in the top 20. Um, for these locations, they happen to be number 10 or number 12 appearing. But again, you want to be in the top three. If you're not in the top three, very, very small chance that you get found. But when you improve things and you, you get better rankings, and so this is an example, again, a, a live one um, from one of our shots when, we, when they started towards a month later when things just got improved and optimized, then you start seeing a lot of one, twos, and threes appear across the board. Um, and, and this this example is a three mile radius around the shop. And so you want to make sure that this is the case where now as people are close, especially in this one mile, you're in lots of one, twos, and threes. As you get further into the second mile, like not as not as strong, but you still have some threes, some twos lingering here. But there's an opportunity now for a customer to be able to find you organically when typing in auto repair, comparatively to before where literally everything is red. But in order to find you, you have to be spending money on ads or um, doing something slightly different there. So number three, we're going to be talking about making a texting marketing plan. So texting, um, statistics have shown that 98% of all text messages are opened and 95% of text messages are opened and responded to within three minutes of being delivered. So again, texting is just the way, of, um, the way to communicate with a lot of, uh, so, I mean, the younger generation, yes, but really with everyone in general. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but if there's like a little notification on a text and it, it's not marked as red, like you... I can't help it. You have to open it at least and read what, what's being said. And so you that's a powerful mechanism that you can leverage comparative to emails where people people have inboxes that have thousands and thousands of unread emails or things get filtered or spam automatically. So it's just a very easy way to um, communicate clearly with, with your customer. Um, but also you want to make sure that they approve being, being texted too. So as long as typically you approve that they get text with updates about how their car is, um, then you just kind of have also have a disclaimer that, hey, um, we'll also be sending some text follow-ups, things like that on there. And you can go ahead and do that. Can you do this last thing for on shops? I'm looking at buying. Are you, sorry, I just, I just saw this question that, that popped up and I'm not quite sure what that, what that means. Um, so if you can throw in, all right. Oh, the local Viking. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you want to, um, if you want to message, uh, message me after this, what, what that, what that other shop is that you're looking into buying and how their rankings are doing analysis, happy to do that. So yeah, just feel free to shoot me, shoot me a message and, and we can, um, dive in deeper after this, but, um, in terms of SMS campaigns, so a big problem with, with kind of the online forms is that 40 to 50% of the inbound leads that come into that leave unconverted and so that they fill out a form and then there's no way for you to receive like you you see the form maybe a few hours later and you're like oh i finally have time to call them you give them a call and they don't answer or they just oh they, they found a different shop like that that ha i hear that a lot and so you want to make sure that there is a mechanism to respond right away and so if someone fills out the form there should be boom a, a text and an email that goes that goes out to them but particularly a text that just says hey thank you for filling out their form because in your form you should have phone number on there and and then from there just say thank you for filling out a form um how how can we help you just kind of opening that dialogue and then boom a team member can jump in and and text them or even better just give them a call usually can um take care of that a lot faster that way and so um and then, like I just mentioned, this, this is the why I jumped the gun a little bit there. Um, so leads that are not followed up within 15 minutes, they go cold. Um, again, if something's wrong with someone's car, they're not just going to wait around because they thought that, oh yeah, that was the one, um, this one that I looked up there at the top of Google, best reviews, but 
they didn't respond. So I'm just going to wait all day um, to get my car fixed. So it's like, no, they're just going to call, call the second one, call the third one, whoever answers and, and gets them and is able to get them in in the appropriate amount of time and get it fixed for them, get their car. Um, that's, that's who's getting that, that car coming into the shop. So you want to make sure you have a mechanism that even if you have it to not be able to answer the phone or um, respond back to their form, fill out right away that you have a, at least a text that shoots to them, letting them know that, Hey, I'm, I'm, we're here. Sorry, we're busy right now. Um, how can we help you? And then you can get to the text as soon as possible. And so the average customer typically needs to be followed up with three to five times before, before they come in. Now that that's obviously going to be a wide range of different, uh, different things. I know some people are like, ah, oh, just one time, but definitely the average is usually three to five. Um, today's consumers prefer to interact with text, like I mentioned before, instead of phone call or, or email, but once you get that initial text and you send it out to them, someone texts back, if it's just easier for your team to call, call. Because again, you, you can get that dialogue going a lot better. You can make sure that there's someone friendly on the phone and um, a really high likelihood that that then converts to that person coming in. And so making sure that, again, if you have texting, then you on top of that, you want to leverage automation behind the texting and making sure that things are getting responded to, whether it's a missed call or form fill out. And then just automating that follow-up process. Even if you don't see a text back from that initial text, you can maybe wait five, maybe wait five minutes, 10 minutes, send another text that, hey, just want to double check that everything's okay. Um, is there anything that we can do for you to help you with your car? And then again, you have, you have another opportunity for them to, to respond back to you. And so this is the typical lead flow of what, of what it looks like there. Um, with how we set it up within with our within our CRM, this is again all these different automated touch points of how it works through a workflow. Um, don't want to dig too too into the weeds here, but just giving you an idea of how you can set up a workflow automation um, just with texting alone and, and not have to touch it and know that okay things are getting followed up on. And so just to give you some simple math of of how of what we've seen work between no texting versus texting with with conversions. And so if you have a hundred leads, usually uh, we've seen conversion rate be like 30% of just, there's just, there's just no follow-up. And so a car's book, that's 30. If you have an arrow of 650, you're looking at $19,500 coming in. But with texting now, the conversion rate will, will jump up. We'll say we'll, we'll jump up to 70%, just automated follow-up. It's not even another person that you're adding, adding in there to make sure your conversion rates increase. It's literally just by setting up an automated texting um, in terms of missed calls, things like that. And now you get 70 cars booked compared to 30. And you're looking at now rev being 45.5. So in a, a difference of nearly $30,000 on, on one month. Spread that over a year, you're looking at 360K to 400K um, per year that, that you're adding by adding in a simple texting automation. Now, granted, leads will vary up and down, but this is just to give you an idea of the importance of having some texting platform and especially with it being automated behind that to, to rank better. And so using texting to obtain five-star reviews is kind of, that's usually our bread and butter in terms of why you want to use it because it's going to in turn help you rank better. And so you want to give, the, give customers an opportunity to rate their experience first, kind of a one to five sort of thing, very similar to how they would leave a, a review. And then that way you, you can gauge how happy people are and if they're less than a five, you can start learning what can be improved upon um, in order to improve the, the process that you have going on. And if it's five, then send them a link to leave a review. Because again, there's a very high likelihood that they left the five here in the text. They're going to leave a five for you on, on the Google review section as well. And so just leveraging that opportunity there. So yeah, um, so this will be number four PPC, but any questions so far, any of the elements, um, SEO, texting, and um, so what do we what did we talk about before this? Uh, SEO SEO texting website, uh, Google Maps, yeah, Google Google Maps. Any, anything along those lines for anyone? All right, then we will keep then we will keep on going to um, kind of our number four section, which is um, pay per click or um, Google Ad marketing. And so I know a lot of people have a uh, Google, Google ad spend and they're not sure how, how well it's performing or not. And so I'll dig in a little bit on kind of some go-to things, some goals to make behind that and how you can determine if, if, if your pay-per-click plan is, is, is optimized and working right. And so 
why should PPC be part of your marketing plan? Um, first and foremost, you can start showing up right away. So SEO takes time um, doing the right things. If Google just doesn't allow, oh, yep, everything looks right. Boom, it's going to rank you as the best one tomorrow. Like, just doesn't work that way. But pay per click, now you're kind of paying to play. And so that, by optimizing that, you can rank on the very top of any search type immediately. And so that's a very powerful ability to have. Um, you can show up as often as as possible, de depending on the budget that, you, that you're giving to Google and depending on where you're located. And you can show up for non-geo modified terms. So like mechanic, auto repair, transistor, some, some of the general words just stand alone by itself and making sure that you appear on the top there. Um, and so that's a, again, a very powerful, powerful tool. And so for some of you, you may be like, well, I'm ranked already at the top for SEO. Why do I need to play for ads too? It is another opportunity to take advantage of all the space that's on the screen for someone. I mean, would you rather be on the screen twice or would you rather be on the screen once? Again, it's, a, it's an, another opportunity to win over a potential new customer. So um, if you have the budget to spend that way and you're kind of measuring those things correctly, um, I say you absolutely should do it. One thing that we have noticed also is that people that tend to be spending with ad, money on ads on average have been ranking better. Um, so ho hopefully it doesn't keep going that route, but that is another thing that we have noticed lately as well. And so PPC, first and foremost, a must is setting up conversion tracking. You want to understand if your ads are working. As you told, if you don't have conversion tracking set up, make sure that you know that that is set up by whom. If you created it, if you have someone else creating your campaign for you, make sure that you know that portion. Um, you want conversion, in, in my opinion, is someone got, they clicked on the ad, they got to a landing page or whatever page you're taking them to, and then they called or filled out a form. So that would be considered a conversion at that point. Now, to go a step further, you, you, you would love to know that, okay, if that call or form filled out, then turn to an actual customer that showed up to the shop and taking it a step further. And so now you can't just do that directly with the ad. But again, making sure that there's at least a way to track the portions that are turning into calls and form fillouts, that's a must. And so you, your campaign would be broken into small ad groups in order to target various services. So I've seen a lot of people have just one ad group and they just have a bunch of keywords listed. So you wanna make sure you have multiple ad groups um, with, within there just to know that you are going after each service in a particular way. Um, Cause again, not one text ad will fit across the board for all services. If someone's looking for breaks, but then in your ad, it, it says AC repair that might not correlate to them correctly, even though yes, you do offer both of those services. So you, with having multiple ad groups, it allows you to narrow in if someone types in break repair, thus your text ad should say break, best break repair in town or something like that, then um, very higher likelihood that it converts for you. And so make sure you under, have a strong understanding of keyword match types. And don't forget about negative keywords. So there's um, there's just the general broad match, there's phrase match, and then there's exact match. And so broad match is again, um, you never want to put broad match in my opinion, because um, it just it just means that Google will just pretty much if, if it feels like a word is close enough to what you're putting, it's gonna put you there. So if you have auto repair as a word, but then someone types in automobile and like that's, that's all they type in you, you, there's, a, there's a chance that your your ad can pop up because now i had the word auto and it, google didn't like oh yeah it's close enough so that's why a phrase match you want to at least um put those little quotes around it to show that someone has to at least type in this phrase within what they're typing for me to appear in the ad and then exact matches only, they only they typed in exactly again what you put in there the negative keywords you would want to put in there is just making sure that things like auto body, if you don't do any auto body work or just any services you don't do, make sure those are negative match. Maybe some competing businesses that are in the area, if you know that, okay, they're typing that in, they're not gonna come to me anyways. You can put those in there if you're just noting bad calls. So things like that. Um, you wanna write, make sure you write compelling text ads that resonate with the customer. Um, and so that, that takes a lot of playing with it, but you, you can make sure that you're putting iterations of text ads, not just, just one thing and letting it ride. Um, leverage ad extensions just to make sure that you take up more space on um, within Google, within within your ad. It makes it stand out a little bit better if you just have one line comparative to like now having a line with different different subsections in there because you're able to do that without extensions. Um, it just takes a little bit a little bit more time when you're setting it up. Just make sure that again, if you're if you're not setting it up, if the person that's setting it up for you is, is doing that. And then you have you have to land visitors on solid, well thought out pages on your site. That are built to convert. And so typically you want this just to be a landing page that 
minimizes kind of um, the extras that are on your normal website because your normal website will have a bunch of different pages on there. But within a landing page, you the ad they already had buyer intent by clicking on it. You want to keep it very simple for them. They want to get distracted by everything else on the page and then forget what they're doing and and not call or not fill out a form. Landing page kind of cuts out that noise. Make sure boom number multiple times throughout that landing page um, form right at the top. It makes it very simple. And again, not one thing's going to work. So you want to make sure that there's constant testing that's taking place there. And so this is an example of a dashboard that we have for, for one of our shops. Um, this is over an approximate 30 day period, just to give you an idea. This is what they, they spent on over that 30 day period. So just, just shy of, of 3K. And so the average cost per click goal that we usually shoot for is between four to $7. That's, again, you, you can get it smaller than that. Um, absolutely. But you want to make sure that you're going after the, the right keywords. If Again, if you're in, in an area that's not as competitive, you can definitely get, get it well below the $4 mark. But the main thing that you want to focus on is that cost per conversion. So, and I know this shows red, so it shows the opposite when things go, when the cost per conversion goes down. Um, but the goal there, that, that target is usually 40 to $60 cost per conversion. Because again, that's someone calling or filling out a form. And so we know that the arrow correlation to that is well above just $40, but so the lower that you can get that, the better, because then again, that conversion rate, hopefully your call conversions are looking like 70, 80% of the time of that coming in. So there's a really, really powerful ROI that will come in there with a strong cost per conversion. But if you're not tracking them, you will never know. And a conversion rate, um, typically, yeah, you want, you want it to sit. Um, I mean, obviously the higher, the better, but if it's in that 20 to 40% range of conversion rate, then you have a really strong campaign. If, if the conversion rate is, is really high, then there's on, there's even more optimizations you can probably do um, to, to make it even better. You can you probably have room to spend even more more dollars in there if it, if it is if it is really high to allow you the opportunity to get more cars. But yeah, but having a dashboard like this at least helps you understand um, what's happening in your ad campaign and if you can make it go. If you should increase the price of the budget, if you should decrease the budget. What should be going on there? So, how to implement this in your business? And so naturally, um, where we are a online marketing company that focuses just on auto repair shops. And so if this, any of these things sound of interest to you, or if you want just someone to have another pair of eyes and check on what is, is going on there, then, um, then we, we do free shadow sessions in terms of analyzing, um, your online visibility, looking at the the keywords, looking at that geo grid, like I mentioned, in terms of what's a, how you're ranking around your shop, we can do do all of that. You can just go to liftautorepairmarketing.com slash schedule, or you can call, and then this will go directly to me as well, 877-773-3446. So yeah, that, that would be our, and I, yeah. Oh, someone asked a question. How do you calculate ROI from this? Was this, was this in regards to Google ads? I'm sorry if that, is that, is that what the, is that what this question was? I'm sorry, I just saw this. All right, yes, okay. Yeah, so in, in order to determine the, the ROI, then that's, so that's where you'd want to then know, okay, of these people that you're going to have conversions, since we track those 100, 136, we'd be able to see all the phone numbers and then eventually the names of the people that correlate to. If you don't have the name, no worries. At least you have the phone number because then when the person comes into the shop, you'll be then able to see um, that phone number directly related to what came through the Google ad. And so from there, you can see how much they spent with you and then seeing a true ROI in terms of the budget that you spent versus the dollars that you make. And so with, with this budget of, of $2,700, $2,700, if you're looking at an arrow again of, of $650, that's more than made up with four just four cars coming in. Now we're looking at 136 conversions. I don't, um, I don't have the, the number of people that actually came in here off the top of my head, but say it was just 50%. 50% of the people that called or filled out a form then came into the shop. You'd be looking at 70 or you'd be looking at 65 68, 68 is the math there. 68 cars that came in, 68 cars times an ARO of 650. Exponential ROI. So a really big ROI there in terms of what can come in versus the dollars that you spent on the ads to bring in this traffic. So 
you want to make sure that you are understanding um, that ROI. That that's like, I can't, let me just, I'm going to type it on my phone. Let's see. We got 650 times 68 is 44,200 divided by 2750. So you're looking at a 16x um, return in terms of the dollars that, that you're spending versus the dollars you're getting back back there. So a very, very, very strong return um, there for, for this particular campaign that we're doing for them. But yeah, so like I mentioned, we do free shy session if you um, would, would like to meet there. Um, we have a free internet marketing checklist. Um, and so if you just go to go.leftautorepairmarketing.com slash marketing checklist, you'll be able to see just kind of your main things that you want to at least double check that is getting done or is done um, for your shop, especially as you head into the second half of the year. Um, and then number three, join it. We have a Facebook group. If you're not already in it, um, please join it. It's you just type in auto repair owners mastermind in, in the groups section. You'll, you'll be able to find our group there where there's about 750 other owners across the nation and even across the world. There's people outside the country in there um, that we kind of share tips and ideas and how to do things better in, in the industry, not just marketing related, just anything in, in general about running the shop, running the business, what's working, what's not. And so uh, it's a, um, a good, another good avenue to be able to go in there. Um, and I'm just seeing that. Do you mind that from S in my SMS? And I have a dashboard to show the ROI across your services. Do you mind that from my SMS? Um, I'm sorry, I'm not, I don't quite understand that question. I apologize. Um, and I have a dashboard to show the ROI. And it's just anonymous attendee, or else I would just ask who this is. Um, and I don't, I don't know, I don't know who um, is leaving this question either. Um, and so. Maybe once once I I turn once this webinar ends, um, message me on Facebook, and then we'll we'll get we'll get together and definitely dig in a little bit deeper on what um, to get the ROI the ROI through texting or ROI. Do you have a dashboard to show the ROI across your? Oh, okay. So so for clients that that use us, and then the ROI that comes from that, and so yeah, that that's dependent on a lot on the. POS system that you have and making sure that you're marking where people um, have come, like are saying that they're coming from. And so if you're, if you're, yes, if you're able to mark down, they're coming from Google, they're coming from mailers or wherever, wherever it's coming from, then yes, absolutely. We'd be able to delineate and a proper ROI and seeing um, how, like how that impact is directly from us versus directly from other places. Um, Do you mind our SMS? Like, I'm still confused on what the mining of SMS means. I, mean, I, I apologize, um, but yeah, ho hopefully in terms of ROI, that, that answers your, your question a little bit there. But yeah, again, um, to reach us, give us a call here, 877-773-3446, or just go to our website. You can schedule schedule there, um, go directly to my calendar, and um, we can get a time together and meet. But thank you all for joining us. Um, are there any, any last questions before I sign off here? No. All right. Well, take care, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Thanks.